Back. Uh, 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 legend uh, in the build. Uh, 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 we got a legend uh, in the build. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, we gotta get this man his proper intro, man. Come on, man. This dude is a legendary, not only actor, to my pioneer. producer. I mean, director. Icon. We talking about Detective Stone from New Jack come City. Come on, come on, John. <laughs> we talking about Jesse Lee from Posse. Talk, I mean, I mean, it, Stokely Carmichael and Panther. Talk, what? Talk. Man, the man played Malcolm X in what? Ali. Come on, now. <laughs> one of the legendary, I'm talking about, man, one of the most legendary black performers that ever lived. He was DC. before... Before, before, before they was before. Before they was before. <laughs> a nigga that know what it was like to be light skinned in the 80s. What? <laughs> for real. For real. For real, for real, man. The son of Sweetback. Sweetback badass song. Man. Come on, man. Don't know about You own the song. This the son of Sweetback, man. You own the song. We have none other than the legendary. The Who one we and got? only. And the star of the new movie. With my brother DC, yes, sir. Young Fly, Outlaw Posse, man. Yeah. Outlaw Posse, the yes, one sir. and only Mario Van. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, now, God damn, buddy, count to know here. Oh, man. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Wow, that's, the best, that's the best. That's the best intro I've had. Oh, oh man, that's beautiful, you, man. Yeah, let me yes, see what we all gonna do with this dude. Oh man, wait. <laughs> all right. He's the the son. You of got the a son junior of, of the junior. He's the son of the son of, of all the icon. <laughs> you know what I mean? He is. If you ever was thinking who was in the Black Power Rangers, it's this nigga. <laughs> that nigga was the Black Man. Come on, friend. They won't try to tell you, man. Him. He he been here. Mandela Van Peebles! Yeah! yeah. 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 I can't get out of here. See? It's a little, it's a little Mandela. Yeah. Yeah. That nigga young with an old ass yeah. name. Yeah. Mandela is a hell of a name. I know they stop him at every airport. Hey, hey, hey wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Your name <laughs> Mandela Van Peebles, that's two hell of a names put together right there. Right. That's amazing, man. It's an honor to have you here at the 85 South Show, yes, man. Sir. 85 South Ways, the studio, man. Um, I just want to say it's an honor again, man, like to, to be in the presence of somebody. New Jack City was the first movie I saw that I wasn't supposed to watch when I was little. Facts. Like, mm. and it's a, I don't even know what to call it. Like, it's beyond a cultural, iconic film. Like, it's one of the films that shaped the generation. Yes, you know, right, just showing right. the, what it looked like to, you know, go through that era of the crack era and what crack did to the community. And y'all showed that in, in a way that lives on forever, man. I just got to ask. Like, did y'all know during the time of y'all making that movie that it was going to become what it became? You know what? It was interesting. When I got the script for New Jack, I, what I wanted to make sure, I didn't know the level it would hit on, but what I wanted to make sure was it usually, Hold huh? Do y'all hear that ring? Yeah. Thought I was true. What is it? Is it speaker? I think it's the speaker, ain't it? Cut that speaker off. So I got an ear for music, so I hear everything. Go ahead, Stevie Wonder. Nah. <laughs> 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 you did. You did. You did. I'm not tripping, and I'm not about to pass out. <laughs> yeah. So when I when I got the script for New Jack City, I didn't know what level it might hit on, mm -hmm. but I knew that you know crack was a killer in the community and. I had to make sure that we showed both sides of the equation. I didn't want to just do glamorize the drug dealer, right? Although that would be the badass role. Kind of like, if you remember the movie Untouchables? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so kind of like in that, I was like, well, rather than doing more of a Scarface version, in the Untouchables, if you wanted folks to say no to drugs, you had some role models to say yes to. So you had De Niro against Kevin Costner, Sean Connery, and Andy Garcia. Well, in New Jack City, you had Nino, of course, in his group, but you also had some New Jack cops. Mm -hmm. Now, the trick was to get the audience to also connect with the victim so the crime would be victimless. And there were two brothers that came in to audition for it that I was like really interested. I was like, one had big old ears and big eyes, and one had big old eyes. And the one with big old ears and eyes was, was uh, uh, Martin Lawrence. And the other dude was Chris, Chris Rock. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Wow. And so I spent time with them, and I, I started hanging out with Chris, and I saw that Chris had sort of a little bit of a political side that I could see early on. And I was like, I think I could work with this dude. And so I used, I, I wound up going with Chris Rock. And when Chris Rock's character, Pookie, in New Jack City gets addicted to crack, mm-hmm. we had kids watching the movie stand up and say, just say no, motherfucker. <laughs> and, and that's when I knew we had done the right thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That, that People who saw how we handled crack in that movie said there was nothing glamorous about it. You, oh, know, you no. think about mm-hmm. Pookie in the alleyway, mm-hmm. it was like nothing. Nah, that and that's what I wanted to make sure was that you saw that everyone who touched crack dies. You know what I mean? And, and in a weird way, you know, you mentioned Panther earlier, the movie Panther, which is so hard to find. It's like the movie they don't want you to see. Panther, in a way, is the prequel to New Jack because mm. when we started having the Black Panther Party for self-defense, they started letting drugs, the... the for whatever reason, drugs started coming into our communities, and the Panthers were pushing back on that because they knew that drugs could be used to medicate, and that's why you got to figure out now, like, how come in every urban city we don't have poppy fields and we don't have gun manufacturing plants, but we have guns and drugs? But if you follow the money, it very quickly leaves black hands and goes to other places, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's not an accident that they want us to medicate us. They want us to be dumbed down. They want us to buy some stupid-ass sneakers. They want us to eat food that's bad for us. So part of what I try to do with film is say, let me give you film that'll entertain you, Mm -hmm. but also have something to say in it, a little nutritional value. You know what I'm saying? A little something, you can't get strong just eating Cheetos. You can have a snack, but you gotta get strong eating good stuff. And I feel the same way with film. Like we can use film to say, yeah, we'll entertain folks, but if you wanna make it a classic, have something to say. And you did that. Okay, you hit that pipe at the end of the movie. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, yeah, I don't never want to do that. I don't ever want to do that. You did exactly what you're supposed to do. You did what you're supposed to do on that one, man, for sure. So when you was casting, like, how do you, how do you, like, grasp all these people? That's a great question. Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Well, Wesley initially wanted to play the cop. And Ice T Mm. didn't like cops. He had a record called Cop Killer. Right. And and the trick was to, to, to have them switch roles. Mm. and let Ice-T bring all his street credibility to that role. And Wesley played Nino like, like he's Huey P. Newton of the Panthers, do you right. know what I mean? Like it's on, like, and so, like, if you look at that, that scene, and then I would t- I'd give him themes to work with. Like, you look at New Jack City, like, one of the themes I said was, pretend like Nino is a vampire. If you think of it and you watch New Jack City again, you'll see it. Nino's a vampire and all the drug addicts are the lost souls. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so when we had to do, when we were doing the scene where, where um, you know, Chris Rock tied up with the bomb on his chest. Mm-hmm. So it was six in the morning and, and I always thought West, that Ice-T wouldn't sound like Ice-T early in the morning, mm-hmm. but he does. <laughs> <laughs> he came to me and he goes, yo, Oz, we should call a movie Killing Up Shit, make a sequel call. Killing up lots more shit. Right. <laughs> and I said, I see you're gonna go in and you're gonna go save Chris uh, Chris Rock's character, Pookie. Right. The, all the lost souls are there. You don't want to get them lost and blown up. Nino's there. He killed your mother. You got all these people as hostages. And he finally looked at me like, "That people's, you giving my face too much shit to do." Right, right. <laughs> so I, you know, I just had to simplify it for him. Right. But he he wound up playing the role so well that I think he's made a whole career mm-hmm. kind of playing. You know, characters that remind you of Scotty in mm-hmm. New Jack City. Mm-hmm. For sure. And, and it was part. Wesley Snipes ended up being Blaze, so that nigga was a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Speaking of vampires, oh, it's my shit. Okay. Yeah, he plays a vampire. Did you know that? What? Yeah. Not just because he sucks up my finances. No. <laughs> but he, on Reginald the Vampire, he plays a vampire. Yeah. Oh, that lit. Yeah. yeah. Season two comes out March 8th. Pop your yeah, shit. That's dope. Yeah, Pop yeah, your that's shit. That's dope. Yeah. But I always got to gotta give you credit, OG, because you are an icon, man. It's, you know what I'm saying? Unprecedented things that you've done in the game, and you done paved the way even for mainstream actors like we rock with Chris Rock, Wesley Snipes, you know what I'm saying? To Mr. Payne, you know what I mean? And it's like, you 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 helped others to become major superstars and you're still in the game doing it even with our movie mm-hmm. outlaw posse you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying like you're great at directing like i watched you you i mean when we was on set i was majority watching you more so than actually 
working and being in the character. Because right. I was like, all right, he, he directed, acting, producing, staying overnight, being here early. I'm in my trailer. He come in. Hey, man, you good? All right. Can't wait to have you. I'm like, this nigga always happy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's the energy that you put out there. I'm just saying, like, I want to be great, and I want others to be great around me. And the heart you got for the culture of telling a story, you are a storyteller. All your movies, you've told stories, and you put in some type of black education in it where we can we can learn from it. And right. we don't get to, to, to tell our pioneers thank you enough. Right. So I just want to say thank you. Bruh. Bruh. Thank you. Well, well so, it, you know, and to that end, man, I mean, like, I see your work ethic. I appreciate you know, like, it. I hear all the stuff that y'all are doing. And really, this is my father's dream, is that we would learn to do for self and say, if they can make money from us, we can make money from us. Like, y'all bought your studio, man. Y'all got these, get this equipment going. You can come in and give us a voice. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So that's beautiful. We don't have to rely on folks outside of the culture. Because then we don't have to try to temper our stuff and mm -hmm. modify it for their liking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We can still do that, but we could talk to us directly, right. you know, which is dope. And so that's why in this interview, you're with family. You can ask us anything, man. But yeah, one of the things about doing this kind of independent film, like doing Outlaw Posse, was I wanted to make it big, put it all on the screen, get all the dopest actors. But at the end of the day, I couldn't have made the same movie if I did it with a big studio. Mm -hmm. Because if you take the big studio's money, they're going to soften it up. Mm -hmm. They're going to take out the nutritional value. They're going to take out that a lot of the stuff that we do in the movie, mm -hmm. we couldn't have done. Mm -hmm. And we just did it because we felt like it. If you had something funny to do or something smart to do, we could just do it. Because we the boss. We trust each other. We trust each other. Right. Do you know what I mean? And, and now we got to trust each other and say, okay, if we don't have a million billboards, how do we let folks know to ask for Outlaw Posse at the theater, to mm -hmm. get out there opening weekend, March 1st, mm -hmm. and go? And then Hollywood goes, oh, they're making money with that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So that's part of the trick is that usually somewhere along the gatekeepers can shut you out. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so dope, dope about what y'all doing is you can reach so many people. So you guys have a lot of power. Man, appreciate and, it. And appreciate it. 85% come... of y'all hear that? Yeah. Take y'all ass out there, go watch that damn movie. Go watch <laughs> it, for sure. But you come from a legacy of filmmaking. You know, Facts. your father, Melvin Van Peebles, like I said, Sweetback's badass song is a, you know, a class. I don't even know if they would consider it a black exploitation film, but it came out in that era, which what I'm sure was very difficult for any black man to make his own film like your dad did. So being as though you come from Ooh. that legacy, what was it like having somebody in the home that, you know, went through that struggle? Did that give you a, a kind of a cheat code of how to navigate through it? Well, it, 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 it there's a movie I did called Badass. Mm -hmm. You get a yeah, chance, where, you play where I play my dad, people. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. played I played Melvin, you and, played Melvin and someone else played me. And I, I remember as a kid, one time, my, so my dad had made, the backstory is, my dad had made a movie called Watermelon Man with Columbia Pictures. He was like the first director to make a film, black director, mm -hmm. to make a film in Hollywood. And simultaneously with that, Gordon Parks was doing a movie called uh, uh, Come Back to Me. What was it? I forgot the name of the movie. Mm -hmm. It'll come back to me. Um, so Gordon was doing a movie, Melvin was doing a movie, and Ozzie Davis was doing a movie. And Mel but Melvin was doing this movie in Hollywood. And they, would, uh, they had all white, all male unions, right? And so I saw my dad nav doing tricks to get people of color in the union. And the unions were pissed off and they were kind of coming after him. So the very next movie, my dad says, he said he's going to do it non-union. He took all his money, you know, like my college fund. Right. <laughs> all, our, all, our, all the family right. shit. Do you know what I mean? And luckily he wasn't a materialistic cat. Right. You know, he was like, uh-uh, I'm not going to, I don't put my money in a place where they can, they can control me. Mm -hmm. Right. So he took all his money and said he's going to finance his own movie. He found a group that no one had heard of called Earth, Wind & Fire. Mm. And he had them do the soundtrack, and he made Sweetback. Now, what happened was he had a multiracial crew. It was white folks, black folks, women, Latinos. And so they got arrested because no one had seen young people like that directing, doing a movie. Mm -hmm. So they just thought they stole all the camera equipment. They, they threw them all in jail. But they figured with a name like Melvin Van Peebles, he must be a Dutch aristocrat. Mm -hmm. So my dad couldn't just go down there immediately and pull him out. Mm -hmm. I remember this. When he finally got them out that, 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 that Monday, Big T, who was the sound man, is a big dude, played by Terry Crews in Badass. Mm -hmm. okay. 
And Big T stepped to Melvin. He said, listen, I spent another night in jail. I'm breaking some little, <laughs> some little sucker's neck. I remember when my dad stepped in T and said, look, T, I love you. But if I was scared of you, I wouldn't be the kind of nigga to get this shit done in the first place. Well, right. I, I got Straight all up. my stuff in here, all my shit, right. and my children's shit, and the college funds, everything in here. And if we win, we're going to change how people think and portray people of color in movies forever. And if we lose, we lose, and I lose all my shit. So I want you to stay on the movie. But if you threaten me again, I got to take you out. And I don't fight fair, because right. you will whip my ass. Right. <laughs> Ain't right. no doubt about it. And T stayed, and we made that hit. But I remembered that as a kid, watching my dad. And then after that, he started getting women in the union and people of color. And like his dream would be to see y'all not only being in front of the camera, not just us playing ball. We know we can play ball. It's seeing us own the team, mm -hmm. seeing us not just act, but produce, like mm -hmm. you are in this, mm -hmm. or direct, or write. You know, think about those other things, because what happens? We know this. Pretty is temporary. Dumb is forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So get your right smart there. game on. Mm -hmm. You feel mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what y'all are doing. So I know he'd be really proud of what y'all are, are doing. And, and, I, and, and not to blow you up, but when I worked with you on Armed, I said, this guy's got something. He's smart. He's got work ethic. I think you're gonna, I, what, it's like what I saw when I saw Chris Rock. I was like, and that's why I wanted you in Outlaw Posse was I think we're not seeing you in different time periods as mm -hmm. an actor. Mm -hmm. And I think Outlaw Posse shows you, when you see it, shows your man right here as an act, funny, still doing all that, but like taking it forward as an actor. And that's really dope. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, he I sent me a clip, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, but it's cool now because the movie out, but he sent me a clip of him you know, in his character. And mm -hmm. I was just like enamored with the fact that just he was able to sp go into that mode and, you know, that he challenged himself to go into that mode. Right. So for you as a director, as a producer, how do you have that sight to be able to look at somebody and say, I can pull this out of you? Does that come from just time of doing it and just over time you just have figured out how to pick that out or is it just luck of the draw? Well, it, it's, it's also... Um, you know, my best acting is not just acting, it's reacting. reacting, you know what I mean? So I'm so it's like, I have to work with other smart people. Mm -hmm. So when you work with John Carroll Lynch, he's a smart dude. When you work with Cedric, he's a smart dude. When you work with Whoopi, you know she can handle this role. And when you work with DC, he's got it covered. So I'm working with other people that can think around the corner. The trick was, he had to think in period. So yeah, I almost had to go, okay, I can't just come at it from a modern day sense, because mm -hmm. the character is, is eight, it's 1908. I mean, you know, 1908, so, so I can't just sound like I sound now, right? But I, I knew from talking with him and had it, and that's when I met, I saw you at the club. Remember mm -hmm. we saw you perform? Mm -hmm. And I told you, because mm -hmm. we I was like, bro, you got these, you got, you got, you got that, to stay in character You got to stay in character. Are you ready to do this? And yes, you're like, sir. Van Peebles, I'm ready. I, you know, it's like, you call me coach, because that's I'm going to be your coach, yeah. right? And you came in, and plus I think the advantage is I'm not just a director, I'm an actor. Right? When you say Mandela? Yeah, so so then I'm able, when I'm talking with an actor, I'm able to get stuff out of them because I'm in that chair a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean every actor speaks the same way, but I know this man got it. And I know that I can help him get it in case he gets stuck. I can help him. You know, and plus, with you and with you, Mandela, y'all don't mind if I show you. Right. So I can say, I meant like this. And once you see it, you're so quick, you be like, oh, got it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's great vision, man. That's amazing vision. And you being uh, another generation of the Van Peebles legacy, like how much pressure was on you to be an actor? Like, did you want to be an actor or did, did you say, you know what, man, <laughs> fuck it, might as well? <laughs> I mix them both. Um, so, well, basically, as a kid, bringing your son to work days was a blast, you know? You don't I get bet. to... You don't get to just go see people smoke crack and shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lot of fun. And, and we got a big family, so to know that that pops is out there making a living, supporting all of us, one doing what he loves, you know, saying things that that change the world, saying stuff he loves with his work and with the people he loves, it kind of showed me a career path that after after you know being in that scene. You don't really think of, oh, I want to go be behind a desk now. And, and that's just me. I'm a creative person. We have, I have a bunch of siblings. They have other paths. But 
for me, I, I'm, I don't think of it as a pressure. It's more inspiring. It's oh. like, um, it's a resource I could tap into. Even, even granddad, you know, all, all of the, the gems that even you say from him, it has a, it has a power. So it's kind of like, um, you see Mulan, right? Mm -hmm. When they go to the, the shrine with the ancestors. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's, that's kind of, it feels <coughs> like that for me. You know, that's like, what's up. I'm in Reginald the Vampire, so I play a vampire. Um, I was born in the 70s or 60s, so when I was doing that audition, I, I took stuff from Melvin. It's like someone who would have been around the Panthers. What, what characteristics could I bring into this character? Instantly just copy and paste some of his sayings, you know, even the gold tooth. And it's fun stuff that, that you can kind of ground in someone you know mm -hmm. and someone who's empowered you to do something. That's beautiful. That's great structure. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's great structure. And, and the thing my dad used to say, you know, was that the modern day colonizer doesn't put chains on your body. Mm -hmm. The chains are on your mind. And the best way to free your mind is take control of your own imagery, the image of what you believe you can be, right? And that's what we're doing with Outlaw Posse. We're showing that, and that's why it's so cool at the end of the movie where you see the real pictures, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. We're showing that before women could vote, there really were characters like Stagecoach Mary who had her own stagecoach line, had a big ass shotgun, had her own stagecoach up through Montana. And at the end, you see Whoopi Goldberg turn into Stagecoach Mary, like, we got real close, didn't mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. And you see the real people. So like, one out of three cowboys was black. We don't, we don't know that. We think it's just, I'm wearing a hat. No, hell no. We're taking our history back. One out of three cowboys was black. And in fact, Clint Eastwood knew that when I worked with Clint, and that's when he made Unforgiven. He put Morgan Freeman in it, in Unforgiven. So... Or even, the, even just the term cowboy. Tell them how that came out. Well, we all know, you know, boy, regardless of your age, back in the day, it's kind of like... A derogatory a term. term. Yeah, yes, black guys. So regardless of an age, it, the white guys didn't want to have the rough jobs. They didn't want to get dirty. So go take care of the, the horse, my boy. Go take care of the cowboy. And then after a while, once that became cool with our swag, with our mm -hmm. culture, you know, we like that. We don't want to be rough riders anymore. We want to be cowboys. Mm -hmm. And, and then, we got our, our shit taken. And then they, they don't bring us in to play those roles. It's like heavyweight champs look like Ali and Tyson, but the Hollywood make them look like Rocky. Mm -hmm. Karate was invented by the Japanese, right? But the Karate Kid don't get to be Asian. Right. You know, if you right. look at it on and on and on, they be culturally appropriating stuff. It's an Asian <laughs> teaching a white boy. You know what I mean? Out of here. And, and so it's, Egyptians as white people. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 Egyptian white people. And Jesus. you see him. And you <laughs> see him brown. Totally. Yeah, you see, you're like, wait a minute. But, but part of the fun of us is when we take it back is that not just saying, I'm going to do unto y'all as you've done unto us. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not coming at it with hate. I'm coming, mm -hmm. I'm making this Western gumbo with love for Facts. everybody. You know? I think that's what you do with all your movies. Like, you yeah. always put love and energy into the movie. Like, I even said that earlier. I was like, you, you know how we, we'll set them up if we want to, but you ain't that type of director. You always, you, 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 you real. You know what I'm saying? You're not irrational with, you know what I'm saying, the way you direct movies and the way you bring them together. Like, you told the truth but you told it with a sense of love. Like, there were areas that were like this for real. Totally, totally, exactly. You feel me? But they get overlooked because of the destruction and the hate and the segregation. But it's like, nah. It was, it, it was like, damn, I really wish I could just say certain things about the movie, but y'all got to go see out loud. <laughs> yeah, you got to go see but, out loud. But you know, the other, the other fun thing to do is, you know, when you've been doing it for a minute is I can call up people who my dad knew. Mm -hmm. I could call up people like I knew, like we're talking about New Jack City. Well, that's why I called up Alan Payne mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. New Jack City. You know, mm -hmm. So you'll see people that come up even in smaller roles. But then the other thing is to be generous and give each actor their moment, each right. actor their shine. Right. You know what I mean? Work. Don't be afraid to work with people smarter than you, more talented than you. That just brings everybody's game up. You know, bring everybody's game up. And there's some badass women, too. We need to see our sisters in the saddle, yes, you know. And Amber does her thing in a movie, doesn't she? I'm talking about incredible. Yeah. And you don't, you, you're you not afraid to share the spotlight. Like, when we was at the premiere and I I seen it at the end and just say, co-produce DC on Fly, I ain't grasp it. Cause my agent was like, you seen that? I was like, yeah, I seen it. And then they were like, you going to the after party? I was like, yeah, but only for one question. To ask Mario Van people, was that really DC on Fly? That's a right. Of a producer? That's, yeah. yeah. And then when I asked him, I was like, you really put me as a producer? He turned around and I'm like, yeah, man. I say, happy motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. 
I appreciate and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Theater yeah. debut producer. Yeah. Like, where does that come from? Like, cause you, you know, the, the even the thought to do something like that, like that's such a profound thought to do for a young entertainer. Like, where did you get that type of? Does that come from your own personal trials and tribulations that you've went through in Hollywood, knowing how difficult it is for a black man to get a producer credit? Well, it does because, first of all, I see the hustle and the work. And there's three stages to making this movie, right? Any movie. Making the movie, working with the people that make the movie, mm -hmm. and selling the movie at the end. Mm -hmm. And to be a real producer, you're involved with all three of those. Mm -hmm. I had someone give me a, my first directing credit was my Stephen Cannell. Didn't look like me, didn't vote like me. Tall, cool ass white man, right? But someone gave me a break. And I gotta, I gotta turn around and do that for the next gen. You know what I mean? And that's, that's my guy. You know what I mean? So, so the, and, and he's worth it, and he's gonna do stuff with it. Like you're gonna go on and take that, and then you'll produce something else. Yes, you're gonna come back and go, hey, man, he was coming and act like this. So call, call I'm Mandela. calling we'll you call every you. time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every film. <laughs> More than people, I need you. Yeah, you know what I sure. mean? So that, that's the beautiful thing is that I remember when. My dad said, oh, I met a good friend. I said, how do you know he's a good friend? He said, because he shares white people with me. <laughs> <laughs> but when you have, you have your little money white people, we kind of do like this. Right. Not me. I'd be like, hey, little white man. <laughs> yeah. oh. You know what I mean? Because we got <laughs> to. <laughs> we we, we got to share. We got to. And that's the next thing is like, they, you know, there, there's that old problem. There's, there's my, 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 my grandfather actually told me the story. There was a sheriff in the South. And he had these two brothers in jail. Right. And he's a lazy sheriff, a white southern sheriff. And he goes and he wanted to kill them both. So he said, look, he went to the first guy. He said, listen, what you want? I'm going to give you a last meal. What do you want? And, and the guy said, I want soul food, blah, blah, blah. He goes to the other guy. He said, what do you want? He said, I'm a vegan. I want some vegetarian. He said, well, you two boys have to make up your mind. And when you make up your mind, you let me know. And he left a couple of knives there. And they kill each other. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, too often we've done that mm -hmm. and not this. Right. right. Do you know what I mean? Yes, sir. And that's the power of the power of this. The, they don't want this. When we come together, then we're going to find something. Right. We get some sisters involved, and Native American and good white folks. You know, good allies come in all colors. Mm -hmm. You know, just because mm -hmm. you're black doesn't nothing that doesn't like me. Sometimes <laughs> you can be turn their back. You can be skin folk. Quick you too. Well, you know. you oh, can man. be skin folk and not always kin folk. You so right. know that, right? I have a question for both of you. Uh, being as though y'all come from a legacy of entertainment, I want to know. You know, when did you feel like you impressed your dad, or was it a moment where you feel like you felt like in your career that man, I impressed my father? Mm -hmm. And same question for you. Mm. So for me, it was, I had done New Jack City, and then that hit, and they, this, they, they were all calling me, what do you want to do next? What do you want to do next? And I said, I want to do a Western. Because I knew uh, the 44, first 44 settlers of Los Angeles, 26 were black. And we never see that history. And they said, oh, you want to make old Jack City. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Boys in the saddle. Right, you know, right, right. They kept coming up for all these days, right? <laughs> So I made that, and, I, and that worked, and I got juice from that. And then they said, what do you want to do next? And I went to my dad. I said, you had, my dad had taken me when I was a kid to Black Panther party meetings. And I said, he wrote a book on the Black Panthers. And the Black Panthers love Sweetback. Mm -hmm. And I'll go into, I'll tell you why, because that's important that you understand that. So the Black Panthers love Sweetback. So I said, let's, let's take your movie on the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense and make your, your, your book and make a script and make a movie. He said, Hollywood ain't never going to fund it. I said, I got a little juice now, Dad. Let's go out. So we went to Hollywood. He wrote the script, went to Hollywood. And Melvin, you know, he, he has a bit of a temper. You know what I mean? Right, I'm like, right. Dad, let me, let me do the talking. Right. I'm, I'm a, the user-friendly guy. Right. You know what I mean? So we take a meeting with this guy. He said, no, I love the Panthers. I, I love them. That they were doing what they were doing back in the 70s. But to make the movie work, we have to make one of the lead Panthers white. So let's just make Huey Newton white, and we'll be good. And my dad was like, I was like, Dad, 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 Dad. dad, dad. I, I, I feel you, Dad. You motherfucking hunk. You hunk got me fucked up a tree, Jack. <laughs> Daddy, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, Dad, Dad, Dad. I said, you know what? Because the, the word of the day was authentic. I said, well, you know what? That wouldn't really be authentic. And he said, but yeah, but you know, the, the Panthers did have white support too, you know. 
Jane Fonda liked them. Uh, Marlon Brando liked them. You know, why don't we have a young woman like a Jane Fonda character, and she meets five black guys from the hood, and she teaches them how to read, and they become the Black Panthers. Sort of like a white chick saves the hood flag. And my dad, I was like, okay, we out. And we couldn't make the move. We had, I had to go another way and get funding from the same people I did Posse with. Right. And that's how I got to do it. And we made the story we want to make. But when the movie came out, it was so controversial that it's like the one movie that's very hard. If you look at my filmography, it's very hard to find Panther. But that's the real one. It's not the cartoon. Panther. Mm. This is the real oh, I've Panther. Seen it. Mm -hmm. And it sets up the whole thing with New Jack City. Now, here's the, th the trick, see? When Sweetback came out, mm -hmm. Sweetback's about a street hustler who goes against the system. Mm -hmm. right? Raised in a brothel. Right, right. And he's like, so he's, he's raised in a brothel and goes against the system. The revolutionary. The revolutionary. And, and then after that, the studios wanted to make another movie with him because that movie made money. They had a, a script written by some white guys and they said, well, let, let's, let's do this movie in black. And like Melvin got that band, one Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. Let's get us a guy, a music guy. And so they called the movie Shaft. Mm -hmm. And they got Isaac K. Mm -hmm. No, right? And then after that, they had they did Superfly. Now what the Black Panthers astutely pointed out was Sweetback is about a brother going up against the system. Mm -hmm. Shaft is about a brother working with the system as mm -hmm. a private detective. So mm -hmm. He's working with the system. He's not fighting the system. Mm -hmm. He's working with him. And Superfly is a guy dealing poison against his own people for the system. Mm -hmm. So each one of them has a, a, the same icing. It's like a revolutionary looking brother, cool mustache, good soundtrack. But the message is the revolutionary core is mm -hmm. being drained out. Mm -hmm. Same thing with rap music. If you started out with you know, the revolution will not be televised or fight the power. Eventually they drain it out. So you're just bopping your head to some silly shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's why sometimes when I make a film like Outlaw Posse, I make it myself so they can't tamper with it. Mm -hmm. So that what Whoopi says about fatherhood, I don't know if you know this. That was powerful. That was you powerful. You couldn't even be a black father until 1863. Illegal that was American powerful. to be a black father. Because, later in Texas. Yeah, 1865, 1865 mm -hmm. in Texas. Because when there was slavery, the white man made all the decisions for your children. And they got rid of your ass, right? So it wasn't until 1863 we'd get our father game on at all. And that, and that comes up. I would never have gotten to do that if I did it with Warner Brothers. You're pretty dedicated, though. I'm dedicated. <laughs> right. Right. Yes, right. Dedication. Right. Facts. Facts. You know what I'm so we have a strong paternal line in the family where you know, we've been teaching each other for a while, and that's kind of unusual to see. So you got grandfather, you know, father, father son. son, and to show that, in, in like Mandela was saying about that in the movie, we don't have to fake the love or the right. drama. We just have to reshape it for the movie. But when I make a movie like Outlaw Posse, it's the real thing. It's that we even that scene we have with the Baker brothers. Mm -hmm. you know that? Mm -hmm. There's a scene where we go in there, and they're not letting our people vote. Like that's going to be coming up this year because mm -hmm. we've got election year. So not only do they need to see Outlaw Posse, they need to get out vote. Mm -hmm. But they have a scene where, where we have to go in and, and we unblock the vote, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Damn sure do. <laughs> yeah, we should. <laughs> we can't do, sure but do. that would not have, that scene would have been stoop, right. taking it right out. Could have run on that. But you, here's a producer, I'm a producer. You got to get to do that, you'd have to go against us. That's dope. So you would say that, that the moment you, you felt like you impressed your pops was doing Panther. Yes. The right. movie. Yeah. Well, that's when he looked at me and he said, son, you have the opportunity to do anything you want. And you're making, you're telling the story of the Black Panther Party for self-defense. I like you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to dig courageous. up and find this guy's damn movie. movie, bro. Man. It's good. They I'm teach that in schools, but it's hard to find. Yeah, my Uncle Ricky was in the Nation of Islam. He used to make me watch all them movies like yeah. that. So, you know? so think about, so you got to take me back. Because you know, I'm, I'm, I'm deep in the roots. Take me back to one of them meetings. Walk me in with you walking with your pops and y'all walking to the vicinity of Black Panther. You said, because he used to take me to the meetings. I'm like, nigga, what? Yeah, not only did we go to the meeting, but when they went after the Panthers, mm -hmm. like you saw with Fred Hampton, you mm -hmm. saw that. Mm -hmm. They went after them. They trumped up some charges against a brother named Geronimo Pratt. Geronimo Pratt, one of the yeah. Panthers. Mm -hmm. And we, me and Dad, drove up to see Geronimo in prison. And when we did the movie Panther, we took some of the movie from that to help free Geronimo. Mm. Damn. Man, they didn't like that. 
<laughs> they ain't like that. They didn't like that. Ooh. You, you know what I mean? So, yeah, da- and Dad was just that guy, you know. So that, but that was fun with him because we don't give a shit. We, right. Look here, I have enough clothes. I don't want more material stuff. Mm-hmm. You got to define what you want in life. What I want to do before I hit it is is make each movie like it counts and say things. I'll tell you what, good moment for me too, one more, one more time, is this dude came up to me and my dad, we were in New York, brother came up, Silver Dreads, and he said, Mr. Van Peebles, I love your work. And we both turned around, and he said, I'm, I'm sorry to bother y'all, I'm a fan, I'm not a groupie. But I'll tell you, sometimes I go to the movies and I come out and I learn something, and that's a good thing. And sometimes I go to the movies and I come out entertained, and that's a great thing. And very rarely, but every now and then, I go to the movies and I come out proud to be a, a man of color or a woman of color. And with you, your movies, both of your movies, I get all three. Mm. Ooh, that's cold. Yeah. That's cold. That's the check. Yeah, that's, that's the check, that's that's the check, check right, right check. there. So yeah, how about you, check. Mandela? Like, what would you say was a moment for you where you was like, man, I know I, I impressed my dad? Oh, man. He's a hard guy to impress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> It's tricky because he never pushed the, 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 this career on any of us. Um, in fact, quite the opposite. Before he really gave it a, a real blessing, he wanted me to do the college stuff and have a plan B in case. Even Melvin was big on that. Not just knowing the show, but knowing the business of show business. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I definitely, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming you mean in an acting. No, I mean, in, I mean, I yeah, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the entertainment, not, not, yeah. I'm talking about just strictly entertainment. I'm sure okay. the first time you made a jump shot, you impressed that nigga, but I'm talking about yeah. in the form of in the, the legacy that you got, that Van Peebles has left, you yeah. know what I mean? I would say, I would say it's interesting because he's a tough guy to, to impress, not in a bad way, you know, kind of like what he's saying. He's not super materialistic. If I were to go out and book, you know, some Marvel movie, he'd, he'd be really happy for me. But I think he's more proud or uh, he, he wants the message. He wants to, his, th- his things are the three loves in your life. So really it's what you do, do you love it? What you say with your work, is it good? Do you love that? And who you do it with. So I think I'm still kind of pushing, pushing more, but I don't know. I, you said college when you graduate. College, yeah, because yeah, that's that's something that is going to be with me forever, mm-hmm. and, and it's informed how how I can even do this side of the business mm-hmm. and, the, and the fun stuff, the stuff I enjoy doing. But I don't know, man. What do you think? James well, I can take. No, no, I don't really I, like I, you, I, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, you know what? I, I have moments that some of you don't remember, but I, I that warm my heart. I go, wow, that's deep. So. There's been a few along the way, and he may not remember. So I had gone, you know, Mandela, we never did one. You know, you never know what, what your kid's going to be into, right? right? So as a kid, we had, you know, I was taking him to sports stuff, and he would like big organized sports, he wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. But we found something called Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And, <laughs> and he went in and just started getting this thing off. And before you know it, he becomes the champ of Southern California undefeated right. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as a seven-year-old, right? right? And I was like, damn. So then he said, well, if it's good for me, why isn't it good for you? So I started doing it. Right. And then he coached me. And in my first tournament, I lost my first fight. <laughs> God damn. And he told me, he said, you're not visualizing yourself winning enough. <laughs> that was just like, yeah. yeah. And then I won the second fight. Right. You know? <laughs> you know? right. But, but what happened was then he had to go to school. He was going to school. And they had a day where you had to dress up as someone you liked from history. I'll never forget this. And Mandela's friend was dressing in a, he had a hat like Abraham Lincoln and someone else was George Washington. And Mandela said, I'm going to go, this badass Hawaiian leader who, who, who stood up against colonialism, this badass Hawaiian leader. I said, OK, cool. I like that he's going to someone that stood up against the fight, the power of colonialism. Right. This basically was a white school, right? Right. But I didn't realize until we get there. It was a chick. <laughs> no, I'm kidding you not. He had on a grass skirt and a coconut bra and a wig. And I was like, oh, no, wait a minute. I said, I said, son, I said, hold up. 
I said, son, is anyone else going as a female? He said, no, but daddy, I can whoop everyone. I was about to say, anyone. anyway, dog, no, shit, I don't want to eat this. I, I can whoop this. I'm going to do dude. one of y'all touch my titties. <laughs> you know I mean? Touch my titties if you want to. <laughs> but, but, yeah. So it was, it was like, it was like he was fearless at seven. I was like, that's a badass spirit to say, no, I admire this. It happened to be a woman, you know what I mean? And he went, and the girls love him, and, you know, he's... But but I was just I like that spirit that right. he's like I can I can take him anyway and that's the Melvin Van Peebles spirit and I saw that from the granddad I was like that's something my dad would say you know right. what I mean? and then just l- along the way people he would help you know when he didn't have to things he would do um, oh when he first started hustling and he, we have a nice house mm-hmm. <laughs> this Negro him and his brother. They were having this birthday party, and the, I found out they selling tickets to the house. <laughs> well, they did the project. And they were cleaning up. They, they were going they, oh, crazy. Project and then I went, I went away, <laughs> and I came back, and my friend was dating this chick. She was a little young, mm-hmm. and she oh, said, yeah, seeking arrangements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, he's like Mario. So how's things going when you was away? I could tell he was hitting at something. I said, What do you mean, man? He said, You know, I'm just asking. He said, Because you know, I'm seeing this sweet young thing, but she told me there was a big party on the block. I said, big part? Where? Right. At the block. He said, it was a, this young actor's house, his name is Big Mandeli. <laughs> he got now. chicks Come on in now. the jacuzzi. He got, he got names. He, <laughs> he, <laughs> he shoot videos I in the crib. I thought you said Pookie McGaw be here. He oh, had been the food. Get him food. Crack had been here in a minute. Get him food, bitch. I've had women come over and go, I've been here before. I was uh, here for a party. I'm like, like, you got to be. Mandeli. Yeah. Big Mandeli. Big Mandeli. Big Mandeli. Big Mandeli. He been quiet in public. He been out of there. Give me that. No, they had a DJ, they had security. Yeah, they had, we, we had hired the security from our school. Yeah. So we would throw a party like every week. We'd throw it at the neighbor's house too once he got wise to it. <laughs> right. We was cleaning up though. They okay. would clean up afterwards. They was making bank. I was like, oh, these little hustlers. Yeah, they ain't nothing wrong with that. But wrong that's funny, you know, when you see stuff like that and, and you see, okay, he's got the, he's fierce, he's got the business acumen, right. he's getting it. And then he got the advantage of watching us. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. But I know this, and that's what you got to be careful is that. Hard times mm-hmm. make tough men. Soft times can make soft men. Mm-hmm. So I got to make sure that, he, that his biggest fight is like he grew up being around it, but don't take it for granted. Right. You know what I mean? You got that hustle. You just got to do it. Because right. if you don't make their way, it ain't going to happen. You got some of hustle, bro. <laughs> I mean, it's in you. I mean, you're doing it, you big doing man Nelly. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> big man You Nelly. right up the street. Hey, I'm going really to a bar. Really Who in it? Big man Nelly. <laughs> and that's the thing that most people, you know, that have I mean, y'all do it. Yeah. that have their dads don't, you know, you might not recognize, but coming from somebody who didn't have them, my father got killed when I was two. Right. So I never had that direct correlation to what makes me who I am as a man. So mm-hmm. you are already ahead of the game by just being able to look to your left and see Facts. where you come from. Facts. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that gives you a level Ain't of nobody lie to you. I had to figure it out on my own. I didn't have anybody to go ask like, Pop, why I do this? Or, you know, why I want to throw a party in your house and call myself Big Man Deli? He <laughs> did some shit like that before when he was young and you get to directly yeah. have have that moment so that gives you a level of you know especially as a black man that gives you a a, a cheat code that a lot of us don't have so right. the same way you might look at somebody hustling that don't have it like we looking at you like man I wish I had what you have because a lot of the hustling that we do comes from just out of desperation of not knowing Thanks. the blind not having the understanding of who you are and just feeling like I got to do every single thing that I can to try to figure out who I am as a man you know what I mean you have the direct source of who made you and where you come from and you had your granddad and all of that different you know type of energy that you can get directly passed mm-hmm. down to you mm-hmm. so it gives you a level of understanding that puts you ahead of so many people you have yeah. not, you, if have you keep the hustle if you don't lose it yeah. you know a lot, a lot especially third generation you know if, if, if you calling me out no i'm not calling you out <laughs> no for real for real it should no, get no, real but it's true it's true yeah. you know if you like that's the thing it's like how you are with your kids. It's going to mm-hmm. be interesting because they're going to grow up with more than what you had. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you have to decide, oh, okay, how much can I help them out mm-hmm. without literally doing it? Them? Right. Do you know what I mean? And you don't want to help with poor, poor little rich kids. On the other hand, you want them to win and get it. You know right. what I mean? So part of it is the advantage of what I like is, is having conversations like this where he gets to see it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But that's, that hustle, that fight, I saw that in him. So mm-hmm. when you say that role, I said, He'll fight for the movie, but he'll fight for the role and fight to make sure the character's right. Mm-hmm. And 
you know that when I give you a note, you know, you know it's coming from a place of love. Yeah. Like you, you down Every time I'm like, OG, what you want? Yeah. No, nah, you good. Say no more. We Fuck. look for that though. OG, what yeah. you, you know looking what I mean? for? Yeah. We because look for and, that. and that's the thing is that a lot of us haven't had relationships yeah. with a good relationships with our fathers. Yeah. And so that that disconnects us. Mm -hmm. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so mm -hmm. it's it's great when we could start to get that. Get kids? Yes, I have a daughter. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh -oh. and, 15. Okay, yeah. And that's a big reason why I'm so active because I didn't have that direct correlation and I want her to be able to have, you know, <coughs> not have to go through the, the blind spots that I had to go through with trying to figure out, you know, who I was as a man. But I also yeah. respect the fact that you have to make sure that you don't cripple your children. Right. So a lot of the things that I did have to do, I passed down to her, but it's not a necessity like it was for me. Right. This is an option for you to be able to understand and learn. And the fact that she loves me so much, she embraces anything that I give to her. Yes, but so you, it but makes, you, go keep going. Yeah, it makes it, it makes it easier for for me to be able to not feel like I'm inadequate because I don't have that you know source to go to. Yeah. But it is also a blessing to have you know like what you were saying about DC. Like I know that we do this just as black men in this industry. The our OGs, the people we look up to, we look for that guidance. Like, we like, man, show us how to do this from your perspective because you've already navigated these waters. So if I can figure out how to get to shore without having to swim all the way across the, like, exactly. show me, you know what I mean? Exactly. And that's just, that comes from a level of, you know, just wanting to have that that support system. For me, I know, and for Fly, even though Fly had his pops, he lost his pops, but still, you know, having that type of connection is important for us because we know we got to give it to the next generation. But you know what it is, when, even when I was hearing him speak, I mean, you know what I'm saying, about your father, and it's, it's, it's a level of identity before he can find his own. So even if he get lost, he still have some source or resource to, to fall back on. You see what I'm saying? I feel like when you're hearing and you're speaking, even when you tap into your character, you're like, what my grandfather would have said. Mm -hmm. Some people don't have those what if they or we only go to people that we're inspired by. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? What we learn from, it just so happened that you can learn from at home and not be lied to even before you even go outside. Right. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of our knowledge come from outside and a lot of my foundation and my spirituality comes from I watch my parents. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, I didn't seek this on my, I seeked it on my own, but nigga, this is rooted through generation. Mm -hmm. Like now when I wake up, I look over, my baby girl is praying before she, I'm like, it's, it's in her. She's seven. Wait till she get 24. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, you, before she can find out who she is, she still got something to rely on yeah. to guide her through the way. And I mm -hmm. think that that's what we are missing in the culture because we continue to gravitate to other shit that don't pertain to us. And we really don't even know who we are. And you got your father, not only your father who's learned from your granddad, so it's like all this knowledge that you can just take from him and be like, so how did you get it? What did you do? All right, so what did granddaddy do? Cause now that's them, them, I wish I could have a conversation with my daddy, even though I watch my daddy, I never really just had those conversations and be like, why you think like that? Why you wear your clothes like that? Why you eat what you eat? Why you pick my mama? Yeah. Why did you keep me when they said that my mama could have died by having me. What's the purpose of right. your decision making? Because it can help me when I'm making my decision. Right. You. Yeah, you see what right. I'm saying? That's and I can important. I have an identity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So just to hear the way y'all speaking in this generation, it's really is, is, is something that we admire. You know what I'm saying? Because we were talking about that shit earlier. Motherfucker be used to pick on motherfucker that had both their parents yeah. in the household. You got your mama and your daddy, bitch. Yeah. You like what? You yeah. mad because my mother loved my father? Yeah, <laughs> I'm talking about like, for That's real. not nothing unusual. Right. Yeah, but that's trauma. You know what I mean? That's a trauma response because, you know, you had them, them, them bring your kids to work day and or bring your parents to work day and right. then, you know, you only got one parent that can come or you don't have no parents that can come and somebody right. come with both of them. Like, Look right. at you well taken care of ass nigga. Like, <laughs> right. you, you know what I mean? You, right. you, you get upset about that, but, you know, I know that from watching just the dynamic that y'all have. Like, just when you was just like, and he finished your sentence. Right. Like, that right there is something that I recognized immediately, that you can't fake that. 
Right. You can't, you can't, you know, that's not something you can practice before y'all walked in. I right, little nigga. Don't make it look like I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a natural. You are I should do that next time. Nigga, I'm going to do that next time. That'd be some funny shit. That'd be some funny shit. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? So what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know you like that. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So, right. I, But I do want to ask you, though, uh, Mario, like, like how big is nepotism and you know you know cuz a lot of people like you said you can create a soft you know son if you will but you also want to give him an opportunity exactly okay so my eldest daughter has a voice like Whitney Houston she can sing all these different octaves in her head <laughs> oh shit <laughs> but, 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 but but to the rest of us not so much now, luckily, she's very smart. Right. She went to college. She started working with, you know, <laughs> finance, working with, you know, with <laughs> you know what I mean? My mother, my mother, right, oh, is a brilliant man. actress right. in her head. Right. I wouldn't hire her for a shit. Right. My dad could act he, within reason, you know, right. within a certain parameter. You know, if he's playing something close to Melvin, he could hit it. Right. Don't let him come up with some my, my left foot type shit. Right. Know, way out the pocket. Right. So we don't, just because... We don't, in my family, confuse people who love what they think they love as being good at what they think they love, mm-hmm. right? I may love food. I may love sex. It don't mean I'll be a porn star or a food taster. You feel me? Not everyone's cut out for that. <laughs> you said, well, man, I can't do that. <laughs> this ain't for the regular people, man. You know what I mean? So, so, so you got you to gotta be realistic. I ain't going to play for the Lakers. You know? right. even, even if you are Jackson, someone might be LaToya. You know what I mean? That means you're going to have a record deal. Right. You, know I mean? you should have a record deal. So first of all, you have to be clear and say, I have to look over and say, oh, this brother's talented. When you see out La Posse, you'll go, oh, yeah, he, he does his thing. That's even whether I, whether he's my son or not, all that stuff. So it's not I wouldn't give him something that I didn't think he could do well. Nor would I do that with DC. You know what I mean? I'm I'm giving it to folks that I think can really play it. And then and and, and plus he rides, you know what I mean? So he had the natural cowboy thing and all that. And it wasn't no favoritism. He treated him like he was he was at work. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So you come early, leave late, work for the family discount. I'm a little bit we kinda like the Jacksons without the talent. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, I'm, I'm a user friendly Joe. Right. I just can't sing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so I don't, I don't. You know, if someone plays the guitar better or someone's this, I'll look at it and listen to it. Um, but I don't, I don't do, I don't do favoritism because you're not really doing a favor for anybody. That's what I was just about right. to say. At the end of the day, right? Yeah, because it, it goes back to what you were saying. Even when you're giving us notes, direction. We can trust that we can go fully there because we know it's coming from a place of love. We know right. you're putting yourself in our shoes then. Right. So if you say, I think, I think when we work together, whether it's something I've thought of before or not, having your blessing, having you, you push and say, I, I know this is something you can do, it kind of is almost reassuring. You wouldn't push either of us no, or something totally. we would do bad because that's going to look Then I look crappy on it. Give, it gives you, it gives, it, give, it gave us the confidence to be like, all right, first of all, we know who you are, your stature, where you come from, everything that's come with that up until this point and it's like, I'm in the movie with, with, with him. It's like Superman. It don't matter how many times you don't fall or when you fall. Right. We know it was a time period where you were the only fighter. Right, 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 right. So I'm looking at it as still in that right. perspective. Like, right. there was a time when you had this shit right. on lock right. by yourself. Right. 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 right, You did what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To pave the way where it's looking like, oh, now we're looking like Marvel. Right. DC. Right. We got others that we could depend on. Right. But it was a time and period when you was by yourself and then now it's like, oh, you need more Avengers. Right. And you're training more Avengers. And you over there like, look, it's a motherfucker that's badass out there. But look, with that windmill kick. If you go left and you go right, but I believe that you can fly out the sky with that motherfucker. I ain't never flew out the sky. Right, right. right. But by you saying it, right. I'ma try it. Right, right, right. And it's and, and it gives us the confidence, to be like you believe in us as a as a as a you know what I'm saying, an actor. Right, right. <laughs> Definitely. You know, and that that is, is there was a there's a line that I, we lost that I love, which is sometimes that you had. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the family you make is more fun than the family you're born with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very true. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and, and as because you find brotherhood, find sisterhood. You know, and that's dope. 
And, and the more we come together and unite, the better, man. And it just makes it richer. And even in this industry, it's, it's not enough of that. It's not enough of that. I believe in you. Even when you call, you be like, I ain't got no money. But you know how you, before you get a nigga off the phone, I ain't got no money. But right. <laughs> this is a movie that's going to put you in a position. I got an opportunity. That we're not going to say there ain't nobody else going, but we know how the industry is. They don't fuck with us for real, yeah. man. Right, right. Just be real. Right. Yeah. I fuck with you. Right. And by me knowing that this is a phone call that's one in a lifetime, I got to go, man. Got to do it. I got to. It's, it's literally like he wouldn't call you to fight if he didn't think you was a fighter. fighter. Right. right. It was one of them yeah, like, exactly. come kick some ass especially, with me. Yeah, especially yeah. somebody who has been picking fighters for that's years. all I'm saying. Right, right. You know what I mean? That's yeah, all sure. I'm saying. I yeah, want to yeah, go kick sure. some ass, right. man. Right. All and the this, way. And the same when I talked to Whoopi. And I said, Whoopi, I, we got this. And she like, she said, I'm playing stagecoach, Mary. Or Cedric, you know, or Alan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where you got or Edward James almost. You mm -hmm. know? So where folks want to come out and say, I get to say that. I get to do that. Mm -hmm. With this, with us, in our way, for us, in our movie. Let's do this. Because yeah. we don't get that many chances at it. Facts. You know yeah. what I mean? Look, Facts. the last one we, I, last Western I did, 30 years ago. We don't come around every day. Right. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? So you're going to look back later on this, guarantee, and this will be a classic. Yeah, it's just it's like definitely possibly a classic. A classic. It's yeah. a classic. And I can't we, wait to was watch it. We just won the Pan-African, just won. We just won Best Feature Film, man. Yeah. Come on, yeah. somebody. Yeah. <laughs> we just won, man. As oh, a producer, ready. ho ass nigga. Hey. Where my principal at? Where my principal at? Ho ass nigga just wanna feature film, bitch. As a producer, ho ass nigga. That's for my principal. Yeah, that's right. And and, and audience award. Best yeah. audience yeah. award. Dope. So people are engaged. People are engaged and watching it. You know what I mean? So that's that's dope. We made that and we know how to do it. And now we just gotta get folks to see it. Facts. Hot La Posse, get them. Go All see way, it March man. 1st and just March to hear 1st. and just to hear. The dynamics of the fatherhood, like my, my daddy loved Westerns, loved them. Right. And it was just one of them ones that I was just, the whole time I was in it, I'm like, man, I'm doing this one for my, for my daddy, man. You know what I'm saying? Like That's even, beautiful. I'm in it, I'm in it for this first. Right. You feel me? For the, for the job and the, the experience and to get to be directed from one of the greats. Cause I ain't get, I don't know Steven Spielberg. I don't mm -hmm. know all them, everybody else like that. They Mario Van people, man, I'm coming, I'm pulling up. And then it was like, dang, Pop, we sat and watched Clint Eastwood, nigga. Yeah. I don't know nobody else beside Clint Eastwood and the Braves. Right. He one of them, oh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right, right. I'm watching Clint Eastwood, Tornado Storms, and the Braves. <laughs> so it was like, by me doing this, I was just like, I know my daddy, he, he here. Get that blessing and I'm like, going. I know it. Right, yeah. it make, when you say that, that question go back, like, what you what you done to make your pop smile? That's what, this would been one on one. I know my uh, daddy be like, I done seen all the other ones, son, but this goddamn yeah. them right here. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Boy, that, that, that one right there. That's the word, right? That one right, yeah. right there. Hey, I'm not gonna lie, though. You're a good writer, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. I you appreciate did, it. Man. I'm a country boy, man. I that told was cool. him. Why. When y'all had to write that scene where, where he's spying on us, uh -huh. and we had we had to write out of town, man, it was dope. Yeah, I was expecting. You to be no, <laughs> no, man. I, I knew how to kick. I'll how many times to yeah. kick? Slow down. I'd have had to play a white man. Hey, get off that horse, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I can't ride. You can't ride city, a horse. You just, no, Ooh, that shit lit. Yeah, yeah. Even oh. when we rode in and and we see the the Native Americans on the cliff. Mm -hmm. That was cool. And you look up, and then you see how they look. They they were lit. It was like hundred of them. And we play the our Native American brothers and sisters. Fact. Right. They, 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 they look, they, they they look like royalty. And we had actually real skins. Oh, let me tell you, this is they crazy. Like to be called I don't skins. know if you know this. Dude. So when we were up there uh, shooting the Native Americans, we were on this this these uh, top of these mountains, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they had the teepees, right? And it was getting cold. We we're around the fireplace, mm -hmm. and, and we're gonna have to take this peyote. So we're gonna be tripping and. And his character was like, I don't know about this, man. It's not like horse shit. No, <laughs> uh -huh. this, but we about to get messed up. And so we we're up there and it was getting cold. And so the, the PAs, the production assistants, came over. And, and we're in Montana. So a lot of our crew was white. Not all of it, but mm -hmm. some of our crew was white. So these young white kids are bringing the blankets to the, keep the Indians warm. And the Indian chick looked over and she said, 
I don't know, should we take these blankets? Because last time, <laughs> nah, last no, time no, yeah. it didn't work out too well. <laughs> right, right, right. And we were like, all the black folks and the, and the Native Americans be like, woo, yeah. we know about white that shit. Like, like, no, white seriously. people was like, yeah, oh. fuck you, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that to be was here. some funny shit. <laughs> I didn't have but anything got, to do with that. You got two, two major people laughing at some history. And, and that was the thing in Outlaw Posse was like saying if you could have in the course of a movie, right. say shit that you couldn't say at a cocktail party mm -hmm. in mixed company with white mm -hmm. folks. Because if we can get Americans to come, black, white, whatever, and laugh at ourselves and our history, then we can break the ice and overcome. We can we can do this, and it's an election year, y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so getting folks. That's the thing is that I believe. Check this out. When South African apartheid fell, you know what they were watching on TV. Mm -hmm. You know what they were watching? Good time. Watch. Cosby Show and Miami Vice. Oh, Miami wow. Vice with the white leading man and the black leading man yeah. at the Cosby Show. And I'm not talking about the man. I don't litigate the man. But the phenomenon of the show. And then apartheid fell. Mm. And 20 years before there were the Huxtables, I mean the, 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 um, the Obamas, there were the Huxtables. Mm -hmm. And now you see Will and Grace and Modern Family changing our feelings about gay men. Right? So... There is a line between what we do culturally, how we shape the culture, and we do shape the culture, mm -hmm. and what happens in reality. And so if you get folks watching a Western, especially us, going, wait a minute, you mean we really were there? It's not some make-believe. You see at the end of the movie, the real cowboys, the real, and we had real cowboys in the movie, yeah, real black did. cowboys. You, and you start to understand we were there, then it gives you a power. Like you were saying about knowing your dad. Cinematically, it's like you now know where you've been. Mm -hmm. You better know, you, now you know where you're going. Right. And so you know what you've overcome before. Then this don't even scare you. You know what I mean? You go in there and say, okay, we're not going to be shut out of the vote in Florida. We're not going to be shut out in Georgia. We're not going to be kept away from the ballot. We're not too tired to get up and fight for the America we could have, not just the America we've been. Mm. Man, man, and that's way. dope. So it's if you exciting. make our people think and make us wake up, and don't just give us some sugar high, if you make us say, oh, that's entertaining, it tells a good story, I'm laughing and I'm getting it, but it's also got something to say. You wake people up and hopefully they'll get out and make sure we vote the right way. Talk your talk. There you go, man, all the way. Yeah. Man. Is there, I, I wanna know, from your videographer, cause I, I see it. it's a movie that I didn't even know you was in. And it's a movie you forgot you even was in. <laughs> what was the most memorable movie? The one that 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 stuck out where you were like, "Well, that's a badass." You know, when I first started, I was doing a lot of porn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they called me Little Mike. <laughs> God damn, that's a bad name. Right. <laughs> Little, hey, Little Mike. Mike. No, 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 no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, uh, I think badass, man. Badass was really dope. Playing, playing my dad. That was a trip. Mm -hmm. you know, I played when I played Malcolm. That was when I played Malcolm X. My father had interviewed Malcolm when he was in Paris. Right. So that was really interesting. And then I was working with Malcolm's daughter on the portrayal of her dad to humanize him as a father. And then my own two daughters were playing Malcolm's daughters. So I was like, wow, that is a Bruh, trip. Really skim over that, right? You know what I mean? So, My dad interviewed Malcolm X in Paris. <laughs> did he? What did they talk about, oh, sir? Totally. I have a question, Pops. Yeah. So, Granddad was still around as Badass came out, so he, he was watching it. Did you guys ever have a conversation about how he felt you portrayed it? Dude! Mandela, let me tell you. So, when I went to see Pop, this is the truth. Right. I go to see Pop. Because when I was doing, the story was, when I did Malcolm, when I played Malcolm, Muhammad Ali was on the set a lot, mm -hmm. right, for obvious reasons. And he loved his brother relationship with Malcolm. And I, I, they had me done up like Malcolm, red hair, everything. I mean, you know, when I see that movie, I don't even look like Mario at all. Mm -hmm. And so he took me to the mosque. So we, we went in this limo, we went to the mosque, and he took me around. And he would ask me to do, he'd be like, yo, do some of that Malcolm shit. And so I would do some of the speeches for him. And then he said, you know, he would talk about my dad. And he said, my dad was still alive, right? Mm -hmm. He talked about my dad. He said, if you could do a movie about me, meaning Muhammad Ali, the first black power athlete, you could do a movie about the first black power film director, mm -hmm. meaning Melvin Van Peebles. Mm -hmm. So it was Ali that thought of the idea to do that. Mm -hmm. wow. And that's why when I brought the idea up and Michael Mann, who was directing Ali heard it. He said, well, if you do it, 
I'll produce it because I, I went to see your daddy's movie in Chicago. It was the first movie I saw. It was like not going to a movie. It's like going to a boxing match. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. people were going crazy mm -hmm. in the movie, right? So I, I went to see my dad after doing, playing now. I went to see my dad. And my dad always knows when I'm going to ask him something. I don't know how, but he could always tell. Mm -hmm. He has a cigar mm -hmm. and he gets quiet, right? Mm -hmm. he was going, I said, Daddy, I want to do, I want to bring your story to light. Not everyone grew up with a father like you. I grew up with a black power father. Mm -hmm. And I want to share that with the world. And he said, uh-huh. And I said, so I'd like to do it on the making of Sweetback. He'd written about a book about making of Sweetback. He said, okay, here's the thing. If you make a movie about me while I'm alive and it sucks, <laughs> you know I'm very honest. Right. Mm. The press is going to come to me and I'm telling them. Oh, shit. <laughs> so if you want to make a movie about me and right. wait till I'm dead, then I don't know shit. Right. 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 I can't say shit. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, weird. he was melting. Very melting. Very, 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 very yeah. melting. Yeah. I don't right. know shit. He says, but if you want to do a movie about me, I tell you what I want. I want you to play it. And that way, if I don't like it, I'm going straight to your ass. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did. You know, but that was a real moment where, where Mandela, he didn't come down to the set. I said, no, don't come down to the set until the very last day. Mm. When we finally saw the movie, we saw Badass. It was at the Toronto Film Festival. Kind of like, you know, how we saw mm. Outlaw Posse mm -hmm. at the film festival. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Standing ovation and shit. We're watching the movie and there was a scene where he's sitting in bed and his partner, his buddy, is this guy named Bill who was a filmmaker. Right. He's a white dude, and my dad has a cigar, and they're both sitting in bed together. My dad looked over like, what the, <laughs> what the fuck you got going on? <laughs> What's going on? Right. And so my dad's got a cigar, and he looks up at the ceiling, and there's a little angel of inspiration played by Mr. Mandela mm -hmm. as a kid, right? Mm -hmm. And so he's looking up, and my dad looks at me like, what the fuck's going on? And then this woman comes out from in the middle of the bed, and then another woman comes out. I said, okay. <laughs> but I was mad. I knew he was right, mad. Right, mad. You, know right. I mean? you were like, I got to get him on one. <laughs> but, but, uh, but at the end of the movie, he, he looked over at me and he said, he said, this shit is David versus Goliath, man. He loved it. Oh, he really loved it. It was like, you did it. You did it right. And he was, he was so proud of it. You know what I mean? That was a real moment. Yeah. For us, right. you know, and, and then this, this executive, uh, this reporter came over to him because at the end of Sweetback, at the very end of Sweetback, a sign comes up at the end of Sweetback that says, watch out, badass niggas gonna come back and collect some dudes. Mm. And his agent said, I'm leaving. I don't know if you're on drugs. You right. can't put that in a movie. Badass niggas gonna come back across the screen right. at the end of a movie. They can't even cross it out. Right. And badass, Sweet Sweetback's badass songs, they won't even print it in the newspaper. Right. This is, Melvin, you're committing suicide. Melvin said, no, that's what I'm gonna do. That's what the people want. Mm -hmm. So it said, badass niggas gonna come back and collect some dudes. So this dude, when, 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 um, when Badass came out, Robert Redford came over, the guy you played. Mm -hmm. And he said, he looked at the movie, he said, wow, Melvin. And Melvin said, he said, yeah, man, Mario turned out to be my annuity. And he said, no, nah, he's your continuity. Mm. <laughs> and then the reporter said, it said Sweetback's going to come back and collect some dudes. Does that mean Sweetback's going to come back with his son? He said, absolutely. But not just Mario. My son Spike, my son Singleton, my son, my daughters. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? All of us. It's mm -hmm. not just biological. It's seeing all of us as Rios, filmmakers telling our stories, saying, we can entertain you, we can entertain mm -hmm. us, we can mm -hmm. have fun, but we still gonna give you something, something to think about. Mm -hmm. And that was it. That's so beautiful. Lit. Hey, well, now you know what it is now, Mandela. You gotta make New Jack City too, nigga. Yeah. Where everybody <laughs> thinks it's the social media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, know, I, know, I know you had done said <laughs> something earlier about Sweetback and the correlation with the Panthers. Yes, yeah, so, so what I was talking about really was New Jack, mm -hmm. was that Panther is the prequel to New Jack, mm -hmm. because up until, what happened was when the Panthers started getting militant and voting, mm -hmm. and not just carrying old guns, mm -hmm. they, they had old guns, but when they started food and breakfast programs, oh, that's mm -hmm. what that's schools, what did it. Mm -hmm. and then uniting with the white kids mm -hmm. on stuff, and the brown berets on stuff, that's when they got really scary to, the, to Herbert, uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Mm -hmm. And he went after it. He was the head of the FBI at the time. Mm -hmm. And so what, that's when they, they made a deal with the mafia, if you will, to let hard drugs go into the black community. 
and that creates guys like Nino Brown. Yep. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, so that's, once you understand the history of it, you go, oh, that's, that's the first Panther, step. Dan, yeah. it's, a, yeah. it's a documentary called mm -hmm. Bastards of the Party, where <laughs> um, called, they talk about bastards of the party. Mm -hmm. So they talk about the Black Panther Party and the, you know, just them disengaging the Black Panther Party is what created the Bloods and the Crips mm -hmm. in LA because you know the Black Panther Party started in Oakland but mm -hmm. it migrated down the whole West Coast. I mean mm -hmm. all over the country really. Mm -hmm. And then you know once they came in and you know broke up the Black Panther Party and took that element of strength and understanding and wisdom out of the black community then the young guys and the you know, late 60s, early 70s, created the gang banging. Mm -hmm. And that's why they call them bastards of the party. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and that's why, you see, what they did was they deliberately cut the head from the body. Mm -hmm. So that if they figured if, if we can just get you dealing from the neck down, thinking about sex, money, this, that, drugs, and not thinking from the head up, mm -hmm. then we can disconnect you. Like Malcolm said, freedom by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. But when we get it twisted and start saying getting paid by any means necessary, mm -hmm. we're conflating money with freedom. Mm -hmm. Well, crack make money, but it's not good for you. Mm -hmm. Fossil mm -hmm. fuel make money, but it's killing us. Mm -hmm. Freedom's a whole different thing. So when you buy into a thing where you're just thinking about money, now you're starting to sound like the colonizers. So when you buy into the values of the people who would buy and sell your people, mm -hmm. what have you become? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you feel me? Well, That's, I want to touch on something that, that I think you were getting at, mm -hmm. which was because I think it's important for outlaw posse. The the Panthers kind of how they helped out with sweep back the the relationship there. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but after the leaders of the Panthers saw the movie and saw the message, they made it mandatory viewing for the whole party. Correct. So kind of like a homework, you had to go out and see the movie. Mm -hmm. well, that changed so just, the dynamic for our family. Exactly. So just like that. Sweetback didn't have the distribution, the studio money to go. We opened in two theaters. Exactly. Mm. So with where? that word of mouth. You where, know, do you remember where the two state theaters were located? One was, uh, I think it was a state and lake in Chicago and something else, an X-rated movie theater. Wow. Mm. And, and only in two theaters. And Mandela, you're right. The word of mouth. The, the Black Panthers put mm. it on the front of their newspaper. Kind of like you're posting it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Same thing. The Black Panthers put it on the front of their newspaper and said, all of our chapters have to go see this movie. And so the Black Panthers went, and then the white kids started going, and then everyone started going, and then more and more theaters wanted it. That's the key, key thing. More people see Alma Posse and say, we want that movie to play here. Yeah. That, that'll happen, because Hollywood's not just white or black, it's green, it's the color of money. And you know what it is about the newspaper I'm just thinking about, right? Because right now, like Instagram right now, they can control how far your page go. Algorithm. Yeah, algorithm. Like, if I go look at my video and I'm like, it reached 2 million people, but I got 13 million. Why didn't the other 11 see it? Mm -hmm. Are they asleep? Mm -hmm. Are they not? Um, how it only reach? Interesting. 2 million. If mm -hmm. I got 13, pe 13 million people following me, mm -hmm. where are the other 11? And you can tell from the content as well. When you put up a certain video. You can put up a certain video crazy. and you like, it go crazy. But then you, but then you put up some, I'll, like I'll put up a movie. Yeah, I mean, wow. Yeah. Right. Really? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. like even with the Black Panther, it got me thinking like, hmm, maybe we should create a system where we go back to the newspapers, where it look vintage, but we are in control of the reach. Yeah, I mean, the Nation of Islam, they still handing them out on the corners everywhere. So we Just know for read. a fact you're getting it. Right. And That's I also realize that sometimes when those, when we do them ourselves and we have them in the movie, we pay for them to be in the movie, but they have them three times playing at the same time. You remember how you go to the movie, you'd be like, why come they're playing at 10 and that one playing at 11? But they'll both be sold out, but it's, it's at the per, it's appropriate time. You'll go at... 11 o'clock in the morning, and then they have all four of the theaters playing them at that certain time so they can have it in their algorithm to show you, well, we played it the amount of times that you paid for it, but you played it during the time when ain't nobody there. Right. right. You know what I mean? All the yeah, way. I hear you. You see I what I'm saying? Yeah, you question. played it 10 times from 10 to 12. Who the fuck coming to the movies from 10 to 12? Right, 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 right. right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, what so it's like, they'll play the game, but you just got to know. Did you... Did you do a, a soundtrack to this movie? 
No. No. Okay. No. And the reason why I ask is because the soundtrack to New Jack City is, you know, just as, to me, just as impactful as the movie was. Right. And, and that's I mean, a little different because that wasn't period. Yeah, that's what I mean. You but I mean? I mean, you know, but the, the, I was the wondering soundtrack if you still, is dope. Scored yeah, if you still had that type of, yeah, the you score know. To, the score to the, the movie is dope. Dante did a great job. He did a fantastic really? job. Yeah. Fantastic. But, it, but, it, but we wanted it to be a real Western, so the music sounds like the West. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was, you know, New Jack was like current before that time. Yeah, all the way. Well, I just, you know, was wondering because just, you know, the, the, the messaging that you were not only able to put into the movie, but yeah, the music that you picked right. to match the, yeah. you know, the, the, the actual movie, the soundtrack, like I said. Speaking of soundtrack, it's an interesting thing because someone was saying to me too is that here we have, you know, I did the first Western 30 years ago, right? Mm-hmm. With all of Isaac Hayes, Pam Greer, uh, you know, when I did Posse. Yes, sir. Okay. But now, 30 years later, we're doing Outlaw Posse. But at the same time we're bringing out Outlaw Posse, Beyonce's blowing up with this country, country western music, stuff. Right. And Pharrell's doing a whole country western line. And it's it just the like, energy. And it seemed like the energy's kind of, and we have these black cowboys in our movie. Do you know what I mean? It's like, hmm, this is something interesting happening with mm-hmm. consciousness. You know, mm-hmm. when we're looking back and going, so we do have we a, we, we, a soundtrack. We have a connection. We yeah. have a connection. Right. That's we got a sinking. soundtrack to Outlaw Posse, Beyonce album. The right. new one. Exactly. That's going to be the soundtrack to that. When just you just to to promote that each other to go. Movie, yeah. It's yeah, the that same thing. That would be thing. smart, right? I mean, that would be, well, you know, but, but but that's, you know, thinking of ways like right now it's in the consciousness, mm-hmm. you know, which is, which is dope. All the way. Man. So you, you've been you've been at it. You've been at it. I think longevity in this in this industry is always, you know what I'm saying, prominent and it, and it speaks volumes. Your career. Who is it that hasn't made the list that you want to work with? Hmm. You know what? I'm always surprised. Right? And I, I, you know, new stuff comes up and surprises me that I didn't think about. Right. You know what I mean? There's people I go, oh, I want to work with that person. But, you know, like, I, I remember when I first started in, in uh, Clint Eastwood, so we, we were doing the Western. We, I, we were doing um, Heartbreak Ritz. That's the mm-hmm. first movie I really broke out in as an actor. And Clint was talking to me about how many black folks were in the West. That's what he was in Unforgiven. Mm-hmm. Like that. But he said something. He said, you know, no one gets to be flavor of the month for 30 years. That means you got something. Do you know what I mean? Right. And I've been getting to do what I love doing for a while. A long I did while. Posse. I didn't have a son. Mm-hmm. And I did Outlaw Posse. I didn't have my dad. But I, had, I could be the connective tissue. I realized, I don't know if I told you this, D.C., my dad gave me my first lines ever in a feature film, and I gave him his last lines ever in a feature film. Mm. So that circle is pretty powerful. Mm-hmm. That's the circle of life. For yeah, that's, pretty, that's pretty dope. And mm-hmm. as, a, as a black man to go, you know, three generations, and we're still putting our people out there as three dimensional characters. Right. She, he rose and she rose. So it's more about like, what's the, like, okay. Like, a lot of us don't know. Do you know about the Battle of Adwa? Mm-mm. A lot of us don't. Do you know about the Battle of Adwa? It was the Ethiopians. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Ethiopians, dude, there was something called the Berlin Conference. Mm-hmm. I don't know, it was 1800, late mm-hmm. 1889, mm-hmm. I think. The Berlin Conference, and the, the Europeans got together, and they looked at a map of Africa, mm-hmm. and they decided to divide it up like a cake. And they drew it, said, okay, France, you take this, Italians, you take that. Germans, you take this. Dutch, you take... And they just divided it up. There was no Africans invited. Mm-hmm. So that one, when they, did, when they went in to take over Africa, after they'd enslaved and started, they wanted to take all the minerals. So they had this, this Berlin conference. And so that way they wouldn't be killing each other. Mm-hmm. So they had to... It's like someone deciding, I'm going to take his boots. Like, <laughs> you had a party and something's going, you know, I'm going to... I like his jacket. I like his hat. You'd be like, mm-hmm. what are y'all talking about? <laughs> they over there bribing and getting your shit. Straight gangster, right. man. Right. This is after slavery ended. How can we fuck still it? fuck it up some more? So they went in and the Italians got Ethiopia and Eritrea because it was close to where they wanted to go. Mm-hmm. But the Italians went in there and there was a cat, an Ethiopian brother named Melanie. He had a badass wife. His wife had her own army. He had his army. It's mm-hmm. a badass couple. Mm-hmm. And they beat them Italians back so bad they went running. And the, the Italians got so hurt 
they couldn't even take their soldiers home. So the Ethiopians let some of them stay and live over there. Mm. Then years later, they tried it again and got defeated again. Mm -hmm. And so Ethiopia, consequently, was never colonized was never run by white folks at all. Mm. And now what's deep is, if you go to Ethiopia, apparently, you know who's in the jails over there? Ooh. The Chinese. Because the, the Chinese, the gangsters go over and try to take over. The Ethiopians put them right in jail. Dang. And they, don't, they do not play. They don't play that shit. Yeah. And so you look, when you're around black people that have never been colonized, it's a different thing. I, would, mm. I was just in Cartagena, Colombia. Black people look just like me and you, except that they go, hey, como esta, brada? They right. talk Spanish, you're like right. talking that sexy shit. You're like, what did you say? Right, right, right. There's a place in, called Palenque where all the freed slaves went, and they made a deal with Spain that they could stay there because they said the Spaniards got their butts kicked trying to go after these freed slaves, so they freed themselves. They said, we'll make a deal with you. You can have your freedom under one condition. You have to keep a, sh a, a white church with a white statue of Jesus and Mother Mary in the middle of your town. As long as you pray to a white God, we'll let me have your freedom. Mm. And you realize, like, colonization was deep, man. Deep. Right. Even when we're talking about the map, looking at a map of Africa, it's very, at very the real, the exactly. real size of Dude, Africa. Africa, Africa is that huge. Yeah. Isn't like, that you crazy? can fit America, China, yeah. Russia, all of that you know inside about of that. Africa. Right. Like, the real right. true side. You know, I went to Ghana, mm -hmm. and when I was over there, they showed me a true map of Africa. Like, mm -hmm. I got to see the how right. massive Africa was, and I was just like, man, what in the world? That's why, I, that's why I don't be understanding people when they be like, when you hear the, the population numbers in other countries, and you hear about the United States, and then you see this damn picture, this is an illusion. They want you to think that the United States is bigger than all that shit. How is it more people over there, and we got a big ass country? Right. Right. Do that shit even make sense? Right. Yeah, I mean, you right. know. And then you realize, like, when you're in Africa, too, that you don't speak any of your languages. At um, all. That's this is a, a European trip. country. It's a trip. You know what I mean? You realize, I don't speak any African language. I only speak the, the colonizers. They say you can tell language. who runs the area by the language you speak. Totally. Mm -hmm. That's when it got divided up from the Berlin Conference. Mm -hmm. But so, so when you say to me, well, what I want to do, it's like, I want to do movies like the Battle of Agua. Yeah. You know what I mean? It shows show some real shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so the, when they... The Haitian revolutions back, and stuff Haitian like that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? they, they don't get the credit. They, they don't get the credit. Blood Diamond was crazy, but we need one of them. <laughs> you know, but, but it's yeah, they need it. They, people don't understand. Revolutionary. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just want to say team. thank you for just your perspective and the perspective that you've had in the entertainment industry. Because of that perspective, you brought us so much knowledge and so much understanding of us that Facts. we wouldn't have had without somebody willing to break down the doors that you broke down. So I just want to say thank you, man. Well, and I thank turn around so and say thank you to you, and then thank you to Pop. You know, thank you to Gordon Parks, thank you to Ozzy Davis, Cicely Tyson, mm -hmm. Sydney, you know, mm -hmm. Malcolm mm -hmm. King. You know, all of all the folks, Ali, all the folks that showed us different ways that we could stand up to the system and and not just believe the hype. Say, okay, I know what you've taught us about us, but now we're gonna really learn about us, mm -hmm. and we'll define it. And that's what we would, we make our, we take, we take our, our country back by taking our knowledge back of who we were and showing it on the big screen. Yes, sir. Because why? Because DC images matter, bitch. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, guess what, Chico? What? Look, look, we look. ain't did this all goddamn show. Welcome, Welcome back, back to the 85 South, South, South Show. show. Goddamn it. <laughs> it oh. Goddamn. We miss you, Los. We definitely we miss, miss you, OG. Big bro, for real, man, all the way, man. But, man, make sure. Looking at all the cameras, yes. Outlaw Posse. Outlaw Posse, first, man. man. Stop playing, you're man. You're 85% of one of us is in it, but all of us is in it. Go so get make it. Make sure you, you go it. see yes, sir. Outlaw Posse, man. Let's make this movie be the the way Sweetback went up. Facts. Let's make Outlaw Posse yes. go up the same Facts. way. Let's make it. They can't deny it. They're going to have to deny. put it all around the world yes. and put it in the movie theaters. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Yes, sir. Yes, that's it. Man. I appreciate you, OG. I appreciate man. everything you've done. Y'all actually. 
have a real conversation. Oh, yeah. This is what, you went way, way an hour, two hours past soundbite time into some real shit. This is what oh, we no, like to do. We want folks to get comfortable when they sit on that couch. And let the legends come in and not have a real conversation. Hollywood ain't going to let me back in if they see this, man. Oh, yeah, no. It's too late. It's too late. We bang head. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. It's too late, man. And salute to you. God damn, man. Stop that shit. Y'all know I'm shell shock. Man, what the world, man? What's up with y'all, man? Scared the shit out of that whole right side. Somebody has been infiltrated by the white man. That's it's what it is. Oh, it's bro. Somebody has been infiltrated by the white man. White man got a button on all black bitches. 85 South, shut down. Booga do. But uh, I want to say salute to you too, brother, man. And, and, and you know, all that you're going to do, man, you could just right. tell just from the dynamic, not only that you had with your dad, but just your mental you know, understanding of the business just from you hearing you speak, man, you got a long, long way to go, G. But you got that. I think we all admire is a sense of identity, a sense of foundation, and you, you can't be lied to. Can't nobody tell you who you are. You done been too grounded and too structured in, uh, in, in, in a group of some people that have been telling you who you are your entire life. So it's hard for you to go outside your door and then somebody tell you some shit and you like, <laughs> my daddy or my granddaddy wouldn't have dealt with none of that shit. We're now the granddaddies in our family. You feel what I'm saying? Like I got my daddy who I could tell my son, hey boy, your granddaddy would have loved it. So now he's so eager to, to know why I'm so structured and guided like I am. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like you have that sense of form of, of, of doctrine, a form of discipline that you can How always you look to. I mean, I'm spiritual, so it's like that, the, the Bible, you feel me? If I don't, I don't really care f about the human form or human life, so I, I'm also look at the Bible for the references and they tell me the story, so I, I go back and I'm like, all right, I leaned on them, and of course my father and my mother are praying people, so they wasn't in no trouble, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know what, they picked the right decisions. I'm more so picking the longevity decisions. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, all right, how can I do, do what my dad and my mama did, but then think about it for the next 20 years? So I appreciate you for keeping a roof over my head, but now I'm trying to make sure, like you say, if the third generation mess up, I'm trying to make sure it's there for them. Even if they mess up, they still, somebody, somebody get it because it's in our lineage, it's in our bloodline. Somebody gonna get it. And I think I'm that somebody where it's like, pop, you like, ooh, somebody had to get it. And I'm like, Pop, I got it. Yes, sir. How, how, about you? how do you stay so disciplined, man? Uh, Y'all are working all the time. Yeah, I mean, for me, it comes from, it was my mother. It was my mother's way of, of instilling, you know, responsibility in me. You know, when I was young, I used to have to miss the football game and the bike rides to go to the grocery store and get the groceries because my mother had to catch three buses to go to work every day. You know what I mean? So in that time where I had to figure out how to be okay with not doing something that I wanted to do to do what I had to do, it trained me to be okay with doing what I had to do. So once I became a man, it's easier for me to adjust to the things that I have to do because I've always been in a position to have to do things that most children wouldn't have had to do because of my, you know, the way my cars were dealt. So now as a grown man, it's so easy for me. One of the things that I believe is I don't have to know what I want. I just have to know what I don't want. And as long as I've identified the things that I don't want to deal with, I can dedicate all my time to whatever what it is I want to do. Uh, ignorance, negligence, laziness, you know what I mean? Uh, dishonesty. All of those things are things that I have no patience for, and I don't subscribe to that at all. So it allows me to have the free time to be able to discipline myself to do everything that I need to do and some of what I want to do whenever I want to. So just having that freedom comes from me having the, the, the stability that my mother gave me and knowing that there are going to be some times where you're going to miss fun mm -hmm. to have to take care of business. Well, so what, what he's talking about is interesting. It's called deferred gratification. Mm -hmm. And there was a test they did years ago called the marshmallow test. Mm -hmm. And they would take a kid and they put this kid in a, in a booth with a, a, a two-way mirror. Mm -hmm. And they put a dish there and they put a marshmallow. The kid might be five years old, four years old, whatever. And, they, and the, the parents could watch from the other side of the two-way mirror. And they tell the kid, listen, they'd put a clock there and the clock would tick down one minute. And they'd say, if you can wait five minutes and not eat that marshmallow in that dish, I'm gonna give you two marshmallows, right? One little boy, <laughs> the quick clock started ticking, he looked at the marshmallow, he went crazy. <laughs> he knew what is that eating? One little girl, she was like trying not to eat it, 
She had red braids and she was twisting her braids and hiding under the table to not eat it. They found that the kids that could defer gratification say, I'm not going to do the fun thing right now, mm -hmm. so I get two marshmallows tomorrow, turned out to be similar to the kids later on that said, I'm not going to go out to that party. I'm going to study extra hard to get that final exam right. Mm -hmm. The next kid who said, I'm not going to go to that party tonight because i got to get up early to do the radio show mm -hmm. to do this and not miss that interview, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So your ability sometimes to defer gratification I want that flat screen TV right now. Mm -hmm. I want that car right now. But say, no, nah. you know what? Like when I first got my first property, mm -hmm. I didn't have furniture. I said, I want to just buy the property, mm -hmm. have that. I may have some, I, and I got, I said, fuck it. I know what I'm going to do. I got some old car furniture. I had Volvo for, you can sit up in my living room and put, put your seat on. <laughs> <laughs> but people thought it was just being cool. You know, I thought, this is funny. You know, I was just looking, strap yeah. in, nigga. Yeah, that, they were like, oh, this is an interesting theme. See, thematically, I like it. That life is like a car ride. You know? right. and, uh, so I just came at it like that. But it was like having the discipline to not get in debt. Right. Having the discipline to so mm. how do I figure this out? and not drink, mm -hmm. and not smoke today, or mm -hmm. say, I'm going to do a little tolerance break, or the discipline to even work out. Mm -hmm. You don't fall out your mother, you know, with all the muscles. you got to work out to keep that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That means you've got to have discipline. Mm -hmm. But you, you guys clearly have discipline. And that's why mm -hmm. well, another reason that I bet on you with this was I'm like, this, is a, this is, doesn't happen by luck. Mm -hmm. You don't have all this being high and silly and not. No, we fact, motivate was, each was, other. Was, was, was great at always say luck is. Luck is preparation meets opportunity. So. Yes, it is. And, and we definitely motivate each other. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. Steel sharp we, steel. We, we, right. we do shows. We, you know, we have a whole team here. You know what I mean? But ain't, ain't nobody ever missed a show. Ain't nobody ever late. We ain't had to look for nobody. We ain't never had Damn. to come find wow. somebody. Ain't nobody oversleeping. When it's time to show up to do what we got to do, we always did, no matter what happens. So you can't, you can't not be motivated to be disciplined when you, we know each other. We are family, so I know what's going on with him. I know when he's down. I know when he's sad. I know when he's upset. He knows when I'm down. He knows when I'm upset. So we know we have all of the excuses in the world to not show up. But right. when we still show up, it's like there's no way I can feel like I don't have the discipline to do whatever's yeah. necessary because I'm looking at my brother do it and I'm looking at my partners do it. And that means that we have created an environment where we can lean on each other no matter what it is we're going through. We got right. each other to lean on and that's the most it's beautiful different. thing in the world. Man. Before we go, can we have all your beautiful crew come over here and just get in this picture with us real quick? They black. Come on. Yeah. Come Nobody on. white. Come, come on. Come How on. Just come on. Yeah, the white man that made that loud. Uh, Erica, can we take a picture here. of us? Come, come on, on, man. Come all on. The way. Everybody say out loud posse. Out loud posse. What fuck you talking about, bitch ass nigga? Oh, yeah. hey, nigga, I swing on me and nigga. What's happening? Out loud posse in theaters March 1st. Yeah. Yes, That's a right, black woman to get your ass up, come get in this picture. Yeah. Come on. Why not take the fuck out of No, you no, don't. We got she a photographer. Okay, cool. Okay, okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody, if you 